Hey Suzette, good morning. Happy Tuesday to you, beloved. How are you doing? How are things going uh, where you are? Over there in Florida. It's good to see you, beloved. Things are progressing here in Georgia. We are on our shelter in place. We've got a curfew and all that good old stuff, but we are making life do what it do, amen? Hey, Sister Cheryl, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? Hey, Ashala, I see you coming on. Great morning to you. God bless you, beloved. It's great to see you. All is well. Yeah, we're doing well. We are just um, like everybody else. We're doing what we need to do to stay safe, um, not be a hindrance to others, keeping ourselves healthy. Amen. Hey, Anastasia, good morning. How are you, beloved? It's great to see you coming on. It's awesome to see you ladies on this amazing Tuesday. I'm actually on my iPad today, so the image may look a little different, but uh, I decided to do something a little different today. And um, so prayerfully, you all can hear me clearer. Hopefully, um, the, um, the, the live feed is better because sometimes I've been doing it on my laptop and it... Uh, you know, uh, the audio is kind of choppy and stuff like that. So hopefully this goes a lot smoother for us today. Do me a favor as you ladies are coming on. Would you please click share? Invite others to join us. Um, I do see Pastor Sharon. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate you sharing the broadcast with others. Hey, Daniela, good morning. Let me go ahead and I'm going to start um, my, um, my watch party and then we're going to go ahead and pray. I'm excited about, you know, um, what God is going to speak to our hearts this morning. Um, I love this particular scripture. It's not going to be anything that's going to be foreign to you all. You're going to know, uh, you've heard this before. Amen. All right, Father God, we just come to you this morning thanking you, God. Ooh, for how awesome and amazing and all-knowing and all-powerful you are, God. You truly are. That in, in even in the midst of everything that's going on, uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We thank you, God, that we can hold on to your unchanging hand during this time where it seems like things are changing on the daily. Father God, right now we just come to you um, hearts wide open. We come to you laying our cares at your, your feet. We come to you wanting to hear a word from your Holy Spirit. So right now we just bind every hindrance, every distraction, everything that would want to come in and steal this word out uh, from under us, God. We just thank you that the soil of our hearts have already been prepared for what you would want to say, let us receive it gladly. Let us receive it with joy. Let us be inspired. Let us be motivated, God, to do whatever it takes to draw closer to you and to walk in the power and authority that you have given to us. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, whether they're here with us now uh, during our time as an encouragement and prayer family, uh, or if they're listening later, God, we thank you that the anointing and the power that in which this word will go forth will be the same, whether it's now or later. We praise you, God. We honor you, God. We love you, God. We need you, God. So we just say, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Our hearts are wide open. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. All right, I see a lot more of you. On this one, hey, Sister Veronica, it's always awesome to see you. God bless you. Hey, Sister Esther, God bless you. Hey, Selena, good morning, good morning. Hey, Annette, good morning to you. God bless you. Praise God. God is good, y'all, and I am um, just so grateful for who he is. Hey, Toya, Toya, good morning. Hey, Sister Robin, good morning. Uh, Sister Pamela, good morning, good morning. So listen. Uh, if you're flowing with me this morning, say, I'm flowing. Let me know that you're rolling with me this morning as we just go ahead and break open the word of God. Um, 
Uh, our scripture for today is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. If somebody will put that in the chat for me, I would greatly appreciate it. That's Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Hear the word of God. And Jesus answered the disciples, this is how you should pray. Hey, Sister Irene, good morning. Thank you for putting that up, uh, Sister Suzette. He says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Hey, Samaya, good morning. Hey, Sister Re Teresa, good morning. Hey, Jeanette, good morning, good morning. So <clears throat> this is the prayer that Jesus gave to this, uh, shared with the disciples when they asked him to pray. And this morning, I want to talk to you from the topic, the perfect prayer. Somebody say the perfect prayer. The prayer that gets to the heart of God. The prayer that lacks nothing. Listen, think about it, right? Hey, Sister Karina, of all the things, listen, of all the things that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them, it was to pray. Isn't that amazing? Listen, they saw Jesus do so many things, right? And yet they didn't say, Jesus, teach us how to heal people, right? They didn't say, Jesus, show us how to perform those miracles. Show us how to turn the, the, the fish and the loaves into something that could feed 5,000. He, he did, they didn't say, Jesus, you know, show us, teach us how to, how to preach like you, you know, that eloquence, right? You know, Jesus, um, you know, um, teach us how to be a mind reader. Cause you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus was reading people's thoughts, right? But think about it of all the things Right, Venus, it is amazing. Of all the things that they, they watch Jesus do so many things, but of all the things that they asked Jesus to do, to teach them, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And I am amazed. Let me tell you why I'm amazed at that. Hey, Sister Regina. Hey, Demonica. I'm amazed at that because even today, when we say that we are trying to be like Jesus, right? It's amazing the things we place emphasis on. Let me, let me just break that down for a quick second. It's amazing that when we talk about being more like Jesus, hey, Sister Edna, that we are not focused on praying like Jesus as much as we are <clears throat> trying to perform the miracles and trying to uh, give those speeches that are, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, that are convicting and transforming. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what I'm saying is we need to get to the priority of the matter, that Jesus knew that the priority was prayer because prayer is what kept him in deep intimate communication with his father can I say that again that it was prayer it was not fasting um, help me Lord it was not being the head of the worship team it wasn't being on the usher board it wasn't having the title it was it was it wasn't those things that that caused that 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 causes us to be that causes us to be more like Jesus it is our prayer life it is our deep connection with God It's our ability to pull away from everything else and be in the secret place and not only talk Talk to God, but listen, but hear from God. And I'm going to tell y'all something right now with everything that we are going through. If there was ever a time whew, 
to be able to hear from God is now. Don't y'all get it twisted about this coronavirus uh, that it is anything more than God really trying to get our attention. And I say our, I'm talking about his children. I'm not talking about the world because God knows how to get the attention of the unbeliever. It's those of us who say we love him that he's having a, a difficult time connecting with. Isn't that something? And so the disciples, all that other stuff that they saw Jesus do, all that stuff that, oh my goodness, that amazed man, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't care about what amazed man, they cared about what amazed God. Oh, I just got, listen, you understand what I'm saying? See, our prayer life, our intimacy, now that's amazing to God. But all that other fluff and all that uh, all that circus and, and all that performance and all that stage life and all the followers and all the likes and all the comments and all that stuff. See, that is what amazes man. But the disciples wasn't going after what amazed men. The disciples wanted to know how can we amaze the heart of God? How can we get closer to God? How can we tap into the power of God? See, right now, while everybody else is acting like they done lost their minds, you and I as believers have to say, God, I see what's going on out there, but I need to be in the secret place so I know what's going on, on in your heart. God, show me what's grieving you during this time. Show me what you're trying to do during this time. Show me what you're trying to say during this time. Teach me how to pray. That is so powerful. So they didn't care about the fact that Jesus was an eloquent speaker and that Jesus, he they didn't care about that. They said, we want what keeps you close to the father. And if you and I want to be like, uh, if we, if we want to know what pleases God, if we want to do what pleases God, then we need to know how to pray in a way that gets, ooh, <laughs> that gets God's attention. What gets God's attention, what doesn't get God's attention is our traditional prayers. Can I just talk to a few people right now? What doesn't get God's attention is our drive-by prayers. Can I just say that for a moment? You, I'm talking about the little dab of do you prayers, right? The prayers that we just kind of pull in, you know, like we're stopping at Wendy's and we didn't all, well, don't even put our car in, in park. You understand? We keep it in drive or we put it in neutral because we really don't plan help me holy ghost we don't plan on staying there too long we just want to stop just long enough to place our order <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? This is this is literally how we treat God at times. And so and so the, the disciples said, show me, tell us, teach us how to pray where we can get a real connection with God, where we can get like, yes, right, pray through to your breakthrough. That's right, Sister Donna. Show show us how to how to pray that when we leave this place. Clearly, we're different than how we came in. That when we leave this place, it wasn't just about me telling God everything I needed, but it was about me hearing from God what God wants from me. Am I talking to anybody this morning? This should, this should cause us all to reflect on what our prayer life has been. Even through this situation where some of us are going to God and telling him about the coronavirus as if God don't know. What we need to be doing is telling the coronavirus about God. Can I say that again? How are you going into your prayer time even during this situation right now? Don't get it twisted. God knew. So we should be God. Jesus teaches us how to pray. Show us how to pray in a way that it makes God stop everything he's doing. Go, hold up. Jeanette's praying. Hold up. Donna's praying. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Angels, y'all pipe that down a little bit. Danielle is praying. Hold up, angels. Wait a minute. I need y'all to stop talking to me. It's Charlotte is talking. Uh, Anastasia is talking. How can we pray <laughs> that it causes God to stop everything else and turn, incline his ear to what we have to say? 
That's what I'm talking about. The perfect prayer. And the, this is, I, I coined it the perfect prayer. Right? Not for the purpose of reciting it. Let's understand that. God is not wanting us to come with a uh, rehearsed prayer. God is not wanting us uh, to show up uh, with the prayer that moves people. And so when I start talking, everybody talk about how great uh, Anne can pray. No, 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 no. You understand? God is wanting us to understand what moves his heart, what gets his attention. And so this prayer is there as a model, as a guide to teach us the things that when we go into the presence of God that should be at the forefront of our mind and our heart not for reciting but as a guide so a couple of things this is what is this this prayer teaching us right and that is our posture somebody say my posture of prayer my purpose of prayer you understand because some of us have lost our uh we, when we go into prayer we don't even recognize why we're there we don't realize the power of what we do during that time listen our time of prayer is not like any other time that anything else we do throughout the day so god help me to understand the power posture in which I should enter into your presence? What are the things that should be at the forefront of my mind? What is my purpose for, for asking you to just take your attention from running the whole world and to turn your attention upon me for the time that I'm in your presence? A few things quick things I want to share with you. This is the model. This is the guide for how we should enter in the purpose for when we're saying, daddy, can you pay attention to me for the next 10 minutes? For the next 15 minutes, and can I tell you something? If we are able to get down this model of prayer, then that means you don't have to pray for two hours. Now listen, ain't nothing wrong with praying for two hours if you are led by the Holy Spirit. But what I'm saying is sometimes we in there for two hours and the purpose for our being there hasn't even really been identified. You hear what I'm saying? My posture, my purpose. The first thing Jesus says when he teaches them how to pray is that we start our a prayer with adoration we start praising the person of God can I talk to you for a minute about the person of God? I'm not talking about the blessings of God. See, that's what we have to learn to do. It's oftentimes we're busy seeking the hand of God, but we need to be seeking the face of God. Somebody say, I need to seek the face of God. I need to look for the character of God. I need to praise who he is, not what he can do for me. I need to go in with adoration over the fact that he is faithful, even when I'm not. I need to go in with adoration over the fact that God is all knowing, even though President Trump and, and all the Surgeon Generals and the CDC may have just found out about the coronavirus, but God already knew. I praise you, God, because you know the beginning from the end. You understand? We go in with adoration. We go in with all the love in our hearts for our heavenly father. And so Jesus says, when you start off your prayer, before you start asking for stuff, before you start complaining about stuff, before you start whining about stuff, go in and talk about the goodness of God. Our father, hallowed be your name. <laughs> He says, go in praising the person of God. And then he also says, help me, Holy Ghost. He says that we go in praying with submission. Somebody said, I need to go in praying with a heart of submission, surrendering my will to his will. See, again, we're talking about being like Jesus. We all know that when Jesus went into the garden, as he went in and he, he, did, he didn't lie about it, he said, uh, you know what? Uh, Father, I'm not going to lie. This cup that's before me is bitter. Some of y'all know that prayer I'm talking about. God, I ain't going to lie. I'm in here. 
now. I'm, I, I'm, I'm about to praise you, but I'm not going to lie now. This spouse of mine, this child of mine, this boss, the fact that I don't have no job, my, my, my bank account, you understand? I'm, I'm, if you, God, if you would just fix this situation, and if you would just help me to avoid that person, and if you would help me. But then Jesus said, but not my will. <laughs> but God wills be done. God's will be done. He says, go in and pray. Surrendered. Submission. Listen, open. Don't look, d d d d leave your agenda at the door. That's what he says. And when you go in, I know you like your way that you want to see some things happen. But God says, when you come in, I, I want you to consider my way. Oh, but God, you don't understand. This is the way I want to see it happen. If it don't happen like this, I'll just be so heartbroken. Oh, my God, God, you don't understand. I need it to happen by Thursday at 2 o'clock. See, that's our will be done. Jesus says, go in and pray, Lord, not my will. You know why? Because God sees the big picture. Somebody say, God sees the big picture. He sees the full picture. And so for us to be Praying our will when all we see is just one piece of the puzzle in the whole completed puzzle. That's foolishness, right? So we say, God, since all I can see is just this little section, all I can see is just this page in my whole book. God, all I can see is just this little moment in time. This, because that's all I see, God, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus also said, pray with petition. Ask for what you need. Ask, somebody said, well, Sister Ann, why do I need to ask God if he already knows? Because God want to make sure you know. Sometimes we, ask, <laughs> sometimes we act like we don't need nobody. We don't need no help. We don't need no, you understand? God says once we uh, are honest, come on, somebody. I know you're super woman, but you need to put your cape away for a second. I know you're super dude, but you need to lay down all that. You understand? God, God says, I just need you to be on the same page with me. Recognize that you can't do it without me. Recognize that you need me to intervene. Recognize that you need me to change the heart of that person. Recognize that you need me to provide for you. Recognize that you need me to open that door because you've been trying to open it, but you ain't been able to do it. God said, ah, now that you have come aligned with, with my plan, now that you, now that you have, uh, uh, Ask what, ask what I've been wanting to give you. We are on the same page. Somebody say, God, help me to be on the same page with you. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. We always, that scripture which says, God will give us the desires of our heart. We misquote that. Listen, don't forget the first part of that scripture. Psalm 37, 4. It says what? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. We skip the delight part and we jump to the desire part. Well, here's the reason why God says to delight in him first, to come into his presence to get to know him, to get to know what he wants is because there comes a point that when we get to know what God, who God is, then we start to desire what God wants. And then when we ask him for what he wants to give us, he is able to say, here you go, my daughter, here you go, my son, because we're asking according to his will. So we're asking for what we need because the scripture tells us, the Bible tells us that God says, for I shall provide for all of your needs. And listen, here's one more thing. When we're asking for what we need, we got to make sure it's a need and not a greed. Can I say that again? Because sometimes we go in there and our priorities are all off. You understand, sister girl, uh, brother man, you single right now and you going into prayer and all you're asking God for is your spouse. Have you considered taking some time to ask God to grow you into the woman, to grow you into the man of God that you need to be so that basically what will end up happening is that you will attract who you have become. Instead of asking God to perform some miracle and send a godly person and you are not yet there. 
Okay. So we start with adoration, y'all. We praise God for the person of who he is. We pray with submission, our surrendered will. We pray with petition. We ask him for what we need. God wants to know that we recognize our need for him. We pray with confession, y'all. Seeking forgiveness. Listen, I know some of us, you, you ain't murdered nobody. You ain't, you, you didn't, uh, you know, armed robbery. Uh, you, you didn't, you understand? Because we can point to a lot of those big things when I ain't doing that. Well, did you talk about somebody? Did you think something bad about somebody? Did you exercise the spirit of pride because you feel you don't need nobody? Did you gossip? Did you, did you lie on somebody? See, all of that stuff, we tend to think that those stuff God turns up blind eye to but can I tell you beloved that sin is sin is sin can I can I get an amen on that one sin is sin stop stop comparing your sin to somebody else's sin who listen your sin that don't nobody else know about to the other person's sin that somehow came out public so everybody talking about them but don't nobody know about your stuff and thinking that because don't nobody know that you don't have no reason to confess it that you don't have no reason to ask God for forgiveness that you don't have no come on somebody so we always want to make sure god i you know i i i know clearly the things that i be needing to ask god for to forgive me sometimes it is just a bad attitude sometimes i'm not gonna lie as much as i love y'all and i come on here and i and i and i preach the word of god and i do i love y'all very much but there are some days i can be like jonah god i i love that ministry but i really don't feel like going today god like seriously i i don't i don't feel like going you know why because it's all about me you understand and i have to repent you understand there are times that you know my husband and i may have a conversation and i know that he's speaking by the power of the holy spirit but that don't change the fact that i don't roll my eyes because i didn't like what he said and i got to repent because i've asked god for a leader and i thank god for the leader husband i have he leads with love he leads with confidence he leads with with uh just gentleness he leads with that and so i you understand so when my husband is leading and i want to get the little rebellious moment i gotta i gotta confess that before god i'm just putting listen if y'all don't have to put yourself on front street i'm putting my own self you boo -boo, you heard that sound that's the bus roll i threw myself under the bus you understand what i'm saying so y'all don't have to worry. I ain't going to pick on y'all. I'm just telling y'all the truth about me. That every single day there's something I need to ask God for to forgive me. God, I repent. I shouldn't have thought that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have responded that way. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then Jesus says, pray for protection from the evil one, from the temptation, from the traps, from the snares, from the schemes. Those things that before you even woke up this morning, the enemy already has some stuff lined up for you. And so when we go into prayer and we pray like that, we're praying and, and calling in the favor and the protection and the hedge of God. Father God, help me. Help me against the, the, the temptations, the, the stuff that I've been struggling with. That I, I can't even pretend because I know it's a struggle. If I get that phone call, whoop, I'm gone. If I get that text, oh, I feel some type of way. You understand? Father God, help me. And by the way, the forgiveness thing, I forgot to say, it goes two ways. Not only say, God, forgive me, but give me the strength, Father God. Help me to forgive those that they don't even, like Jesus said, they don't even know what they do. Man, Sister So-and-So, she just, oh, she got so much attitude. That attitude has become a part of her. She don't even realize that she just so, just a mean as a junkyard dog. And, and oh, God, I'd like to someday give back mean for mean. But, oh, okay, God, I'm praying this prayer this morning. Oh. Forgive me as I forgive sister so-and-so. Oh, they talked about me so bad. Oh, they did me so wrong. Oh, man, they really hurt me, God. And then I got to see the picture of the Lord, of Jesus hanging high on, on the cross where he says, Father, forgive them for they don't even know what they do. Jesus was asking forgiveness for people who persecuted, who killed him. Man, if Jesus can do that, how much more? I don't want to ride that horse too long. Y'all understand what I'm saying? 
So pray for, pray with adoration, pray with submission, pray without petition, pray with confession, seeking forgiveness and the ability and the strength to, to forgive others. Pray for protection, God, particularly in this day and age as we are dealing with this coronavirus. Listen, I ain't going to get into the whole whether church should meet, church don't meet, this should do the just. Listen, you use wisdom. What do, do you want to live? Do you want to not be a hindrance to others? Do you want to do what is responsible? Don't 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 think that you are faithless because you are following the guidelines. Don't think that you lack faith because you are being obedient to the authorities of the land, which by the way, if you read your Bible, it says that all authority has been given by God. I'm just all I'm gonna say right there. And finally, Jesus says, listen, pray with affirmation. Remember how the prayer ends? The prayer ends by saying, for yours is the kingdom and the power. We can brag on God at the end of our prayer. God, you are so powerful. You are all knowing. I think yours is the kingdom, God. My life is yours, God. My family is yours, God. My marriage is yours, God, because you know all. You are powerful. You are all knowing. You are all loving. Listen. I looked up this uh, this prayer in the message translation, and this is this is um, how it reads in the message. And I just want to share that with you as we get ready to close and pray. Cause y'all know how the message be. The message be like that. Ooh, be like that gut punch right there. The message says, "Listen, listen, 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 y'all. Listen, listen to this with your spiritual ears." The message translation. We're still uh, talking about Matthew, but instead uh, chapter six. But the message translation says starting in uh, verse 7 instead of verse 9 it says listen the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant <laughs> listen don't be throwing no no matters at me this this the, this the word of god it says the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant they're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what they want from God. Mm, mm, mm. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with. And he knows better than you what you need. Help me, Holy Ghost. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. The message translation says, Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. <laughs> Set the world right. Do what is best as above and so below. Listen, keep us alive with three square meals. That just goes right to it right there. So, so you understand, what are my needs? Three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. Oh, I don't have time to get into that right there. But it says keep us safe, not just from the devil, but from ourselves. I don't know about you, but there are some times that I can be my worst enemy. It says keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. It says you're in charge. You can do anything you want. Have you ever prayed that to God? God, you can do whatever you want. Ooh, I may not understand it. It may not even look the way I thought. But God. You can do anything you want. And then it ends, it says, you're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. One time for the Father, yes. One time for the Son, yes. And one time for the Holy Ghost, yes. You're ablaze in beauty. It is good, Sister Pamela. That is the bomb diggity right there. It is so precise, it gets right to it. Now remember what I said, 
Jesus didn't teach them this so that they can just recite it, right? Because we're not robots and we're not trying to find a formula. What we're trying to discover is, is a posture. We're trying to <clears throat> have our prayers be purposeful. Now that's a purposeful prayer. So it is my prayer <clears throat> right now in the name of Jesus where we have... Uh, the Holy Spirit has lovingly convicted us. And I've said to you all, don't, don't let the devil turn this time into condemnation. We, 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 we bind that spirit of condemnation. You understand? We're not going to receive that. Jesus says, I didn't come to condemn. I came to save. You understand? So we're not being condemned right now. We are receiving, uh, for some of us, conviction about the way that we are praying, the purpose that we go in and seek the face of God. Some of us are receiving confirmation that this is we have been going in right. And so you just keep doing what you're doing, baby. You understand? But for those of us that we recognize that we need to, we need to, uh, we need to shift some things in our prayer lives. I pray that you receive this lovingly this morning because all the Father is saying is, listen, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you, Danielle. I want to hear from you, Jennifer, Leanna, Samaya, I want to hear from you. Ashala, Suzette, I want to hear from you. Donna, Toy, I want to hear from you. This is this is all God has said. I want to hear from you. And, I, and when you come in, I just I just want you to just show me some love, some some adoration. And, and I just want you to be honest. Tell me what you need. I just want you to just be submissive. Just be willing to, for my will to come forth. You understand? And then I want you to recognize that you need, you know, forgiveness. And then you need strength from me to be able to forgive some folk. You understand? That this this is Jesus Jesus is just telling us listen this is the guide this is the way when we go in this is the heart this is what touches the heart of God that's right hallelujah sister Pamela this is what touches the heart of God so father God right now we come to you um for those of us who need to repent before you for making prayer into something that's more about us forgive us God we recognize that our prayer should be about recognizing how amazing and powerful you are, recognizing that you are the provider of our needs, so we're not too prideful to ask and to submit our will to you, recognizing that we missed the mark, God, and so we, we need your forgiveness, but then we also, as you forgive us, we need to turn around and extend that same forgiveness to others, Father God. And then, Father God, just you know, uh, desiring those things that are happening in, in heaven to happen here on earth, Father God, that your will will be done according to how you want it to be done in our lives. Father God, that we surrender our agenda, our idea, our concept of how these things should go. We give it to you today, Father God. We release our spouses. We release our children. We release our bosses. We release our job situation. We release our living situation situation. We release our financial situation. Father God, it doesn't mean because your, your word tells us that faith without works is dead. So Father God, show us the works that we need to do. Show us our part and then help us to surrender everything else to you so you can do what only you can do today. We thank you for this word, Father God. We decree and declare that it did not fall on deaf ears that it hit the soil of our hearts and it has taken root, Father God. And going forward, we're going to come into your presence with the right posture, with the right purpose, with the right attitude. We thank you that this word did not and will not return to you empty. It has accomplished what you sent it to do. Father God, I speak your hedge of protection over every person under the sound of my voice, over you, over your family, over your household, that no sickness, no virus, no illness, no infirmity shall come near your dwelling. And Father God, for those who are sick in body, sick in mind, sick in heart, I speak your healing by Jesus' stripes. You are healed in Jesus' name. We thank you, we believe it, and we receive it. And all of God's saints say amen and amen and amen. Thank you all for joining me this morning. I, I, I know, uh, you know, some of you are probably in your shelter in place. And I thank you that you chose, because you had a choice, that you chose to come and join this morning. I just ask you, if this message blessed you, share it 
There are people at home sitting around all day long, tired of reading books and, and tired of playing games on the internet. And they're looking for a word, a word of refreshing. They're looking for something that will bless their soul. And so share this video, put it on your timeline. So somebody scrolling down will find it and they will discover our encouragement and prayer family. Come and be a part of it. Even if it's just for a short while, while being sheltered in place. But if this message blessed you, click share. And here's the great news. God willing, we will be back again tomorrow morning. Same time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Come together. God bless you, Sister Veronica. Bless you too, Sister Ishala. We're going to come back together again um, to hear what thus saith the Lord and to lift up and encourage each other. Amen. It was great to see all of you. Have an amazing day. I love you. And just have a great day on purpose. Amen. All right. Awesome. You, Nikki, I appreciate that. God bless you all. Love you. God bless you too, Danielle. Love each and every one of you. Thank you, Anastasia. I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen.